So I've had my Tacoma now for almost two years because I needed a truck when I was working on this house project and so I had to sell the van. And the truck has been awesome but unfortunately the bed has just been a mess ever since I got it. Um, it tends to just be a gear explosion at the end of the trip like this last weekend where by the time I get home it's just a mess. I've got to clean up and then anytime I want to do things while I'm out on the trail I just end up having to pile gear on the ground and I, this is my kitchen space that just gets in the way. And so anyways, we got the camper up top. We got the go fast camper and that's been working awesome for us, but I need to do something to organize this better and make it a place that can store things to where I can easily roll out a kitchen, use it, put it away cleanly and not worry about it looking like this as well as be able to store bikes, skis, fishing poles, all sorts of stuff down here. So I've got a rough plan kind of drawn up here. Um, not sure if it's going to work. It might just be way too tight in there, but I've got some um, hinges and some sliders and a bunch of different parts I ordered up already. So I want to get this cleaned out, get some measurements, and then I just need to, yeah, start piecing it together. So go grab some plywood and see what I can do. I haven't even showed you guys this truck yet, but we got this F-250 from Sadie's grandpa. He bought it new years ago. Sadie grew up in it and he needed to sell it because he's getting kind of old and said he can't get into it anymore. So we bought it and this is the next project. But for now, it is a grocery getter or plywood getter, I suppose. Okay, man, I don't know why I chose to do this today. It is the hottest day of the year so far forecasted to be 105 and i think it's already close to start this project out i wanted to get some general dimensions of the things i would commonly be carrying and so the first priority on that was going to be my kitchen setup and at this point i had my um, old stove and i was actually planning to replace it which i did before i finished but i used those dimensions to help establish the width of the drawer that i'd be going with and then i started by cutting out the floor piece so that it would match the shape of the right half of the bed and end up being the base for the whole drawer system. Because I'm a total amateur when it comes to building drawers and well, really carpentry in general, I don't know the proper way to do it, but I decided on this one, I would build the sides that would create the box that surrounds this whole drawer first. And that way I could then put the slides into there, measure the distance between the slides and know exactly how wide to build the drawer itself. You'll see throughout this that my primary method of joining wood together is using this Craig jig. Now they come in multiple forms. If you haven't seen them before, um, you really should, especially if you're just at home DIYer and you don't have the fancy tools. They're a cheap option that helps to create much stronger joints. I've used it now to build my van, my car twice, this truck and a whole variety of other things. And they're pretty impressive. So they just create a little pocket. Then you throw a screw in there, one of their screws and you're good to go. To attach the sides and get a perfect spacing all the way through, I use a spacer board because I've found that it's a lot quicker and easier than using a measuring tape that sometimes leaves me with slight inconsistencies that cause problems when you're doing things like having something slide in and out that's a universal width. And so I got that in, put the slides in, and made sure that the tailgate would close once they're there. And then I got to cutting the drawer components themselves. And because every project deserves a new tool, I decided to get a router this time. And it's something I've wanted for a long time for a variety of reasons. And today the primary one was gonna be creating these dado slots that would go on either side of the drawer and then the floor of the drawer would slip in and cradle it. And then it just helps to carry the weight and over time you're not relying on a butt joint that could fail as easy, or at least that's what I think. And um, I've never done it before. So we'll see how this works. Okay, I'm gonna start to sound like a Craig fanboy here and that's probably because I am at this point. And that's because DIYers like me don't really have a ton of space and tools. And while I have slowly been building out my set and I feel like it's way more robust than it was, one thing I still don't have is a table saw. And most carpenters say that's the first thing you should have. But I don't have the space, don't wanna spend the money. And I've been using this Craig Rip Cut jig for the last three, four years, and it's been phenomenal. The circular saw mounts into it, you set the width, and I think you can go up to about 24 inches, and then you can rip a big, long chunk of plywood down into the width that you need. And that is what I'm using for this entire project. Okay, it is day two, and it's time to get this drawer covered up, and then build a compartment on this side, 
to fit that little out space there. I'm not sure exactly how it's gonna look yet. And then I wanna get started on the other side. So we got a lot to do today. I would like to get the majority of the structure itself completed. To get this top piece built, I decided to try to just scribe off of the wall. So I used a pencil to generally match the curvature of the edge of the bed. And then I used a jigsaw and pretty much just carved it down until it fit nice and snug up against the edge since I didn't want anything dropping off of that side when we're traveling. And like the rest of the build, I used a couple of brad nails to hold it in place with some wood glue. And then I drove a bunch of Craig screws in place because that's what I do. Next up came the drawer face, and so to do that, I just measured up a rough shape, put it up there, and then I had to cut out a little slot for that locking slider mechanism, and from there, I just test fit it until it worked, and then I screwed it from the inside, but it turns out that wasn't enough, because you'll see later what I had to do. Now I am working on the top, and originally I decided I was going to make two trap doors so that I could access the inside of that drawer from the inside of the bed. So if the weather was really bad, we had the camper up, uh, we could flap that open, reach in, grab stuff. I had decided to just go with one, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now we are on to the other side, the big sliding tray. So to start this side, I did the same thing as on the other side, which was make the base first so that it could perfectly match the shape of the floor and nest in there well with that other board since I wanted them to be separate so that I could remove them easily or just run one or the other. But then when they're in there together, I wanted them to match so tightly that it's all just locked into place along with the pieces that will add to hold them together. Next up was a drawer. So I measured the remaining width that I had to work with and just started to build this tray. And the sides on this only needed to be tall enough to attach to the slides and provide a little bit of vertical strength. And because I wanted it to be as low profile as possible and also have no space to where I could stand on it and it would just set down onto the wood below it, I did not do a dado joint. I just did a standard butt joint so that it could be nearly rubbing on that bottom surface. And from there, I cut a big divider board because I want to leave kind of a blank slate to work with in the future. I glued it down using the tray and the sliders as the divider to establish the width. And then I put a little triangle piece up front to help just add some stability to that divider. And I added another one on the outside as well. and it's time for a test fitting we slipped it in and it was almost perfect but it wouldn't slide all the way in because the top of that divider was hitting one of the pipes on the camper so pulled it out and cut it down shorter all right here's a bike mount because i have a through axle on my mountain bike i needed a mount that would clamp down on that axle and be quick in and out so that i didn't have to like thread it in and out um, through the mount and i found this it was pretty expensive but I think it's gonna be the perfect solution. So it's just basically a clamp that grabs onto my axle. So you just clamp it down, use this guy, boom, it's done. And it even has a lock if I want to use it, which I don't think I really even need it. But yes, yeah, so this guy is gonna go right up here. This is gonna be home base for the mountain bike. Now I do have a bike rack and you guys have seen me use that quite a bit. If we're going somewhere together, Sadie and I, then we'll probably be using that for the most part. But sometimes if I'm going somewhere far by myself or I'm in an area where I'm a little bit sketched out, because my bike's fairly expensive and it has a carbon fiber frame, it just made sense to have an option to have it inside of the bed where it would be protected from rocks and stuff and the weather while going down the road as well as safe when we're in town. Then I sprayed some super sticky adhesive onto there and added this rhino line looking black mat to help just protect the wood from things sliding on top of it. Since if I wasn't going to be using the bike, I would be putting totes and a cooler in here since this was also sized exactly for those big yellow totes that everybody has as well as my cooler that I love. So I added some weights at the end to help adhere that down, make sure it sticks nice and tight. And then we went to test fitting.
At this point, I took a long break because we had some trips to go on and I needed to replace the suspension because it was incredibly clapped out and yeah, it just needed help. So since I was adding weight, I wanted to beef things up a bit and I'll make a whole video on this down the road. But I replaced the whole leaf pack, did new struts all around and coils in the front as well, which came with its own problems. And then got a new set of rubber on here and I really mixed things up and put some Falcon Wild Peaks on there, just like our other peak guards. By now, a couple months have gone by and I am back to work. It's a lot colder now, but I've got some trips to prep for. So I wanted to get this thing finished up and that faceplate was not holding on after a few trips of use, it started to pull off. So added some additional screws from the outside and bada boom, it was working perfect. The bike rack also got a bit loose, so I used some bolts to secure it since they can't tear out like screws can. And then now I needed to secure the two pieces together. So to start with, I drilled a hole through both pieces and then dropped two bolts through them just to secure them together. And then I got D-rings and turnbuckles. I fastened the D-rings onto either side in the front corners of the bed. And then using the turnbuckles, I would connect into the little tie-down points that are permanently affixed to the bed itself. I also found that that divider wall was just too tall for my liking and so I trimmed it down shorter once again and cut a little hole in the sidewall of that drawer so that I could reach in and slide those bolts in and out when I was connecting it and make it easy if I wanted to take it out. During this process I also removed some chunks of wood from the base beneath the drawer and the tray because they were just adding weight and I didn't feel like they were necessary structurally. So now it's time to gear up. I started with my water jug and I like to have that somewhere that's really accessible because I can then grab it to go fill it up somewhere or else I can put it inside the cab if it's below freezing and I'm worried about it turning into a block of ice. And added my cooler that fits the tray perfect and my new jet boil stove system that is way more compact and capable than the other one and then I want to make a workstation that I could put my cutting board in in order to just do food prep and so I cut this little drop down so that the height would be more fitting to where I stood and then built a couple of sliders that I would mount to either side of the inside of the drawer and then the cutting board would just sit right on top of them if I wanted to use it in there I could I could slide it back out of my way or I could remove it completely to set it on a picnic table or whatever else these things are called quick fists and they're great for remounting handled tools to things and so i want to mount my axe in here and so i carved them out a little bit since the size i ordered was a little bit small and then i screwed them on to the side of my drawer system and just like that, the whole system was ready for its first test run. And so over Thanksgiving weekend, we took it out to Washington and it worked flawlessly. This is the new stove set up and I really love it so far. We made a delicious breakfast and hung out by the waterfall. Drawer worked great. Everything was awesome. And I will certainly be making more videos on any changes we make. So if you want more details on this build, go check out my website, Road to Ridge. I'm going to be sharing more about this along with any other details like potentially the plans if you want to see those.